Oh, this place is like a shit tip. Well, it's not that bad. Here it is. No, it isn't. Whatever. I've decided to go tubeless um, because these wheels, they'll handle it. My tyres will handle it. So I'm going tubeless because I want to, because I can. So I've just put this, um, this is the sealer. Oh, this is the sealer that goes around it, the rubber piece that you put around you where your spokes go and it's supposed to seal all the air off. Just a word of warning, don't put it on here, don't put it fully seated. If you're going to balance your wheels, which I've got to do because they are, um, you can see it's quite badly out of balance. Don't put it all the way in there because you're not going to get it out again because it's bloody ridiculously tight. So, what I'm going to do is let that centre there like that, like that, and I'm going to put weights on here, and then I'm going to make it so as it goes around it just doesn't stop anywhere, and that will be balanced. I'm also going to put, I think, if I can, I'm going to put the tyre on, and then I'm going to mark where the wheel is against the tyre, just to make sure that the tyre is balanced correctly as well, and then I'll stick weights on, and then put the wheel on, and then I'll seal it, and then the fun begins trying to seal it properly because I don't know how this is going to seal. I don't know how I'm going to seal it actually. I've got CO2 canisters, I'll just blast it full of that and explode the bastard. <laughs> you can see how bad this wheel is. Uh, that's how much weight I've had to stick on there just to keep it balanced. What I've done is, on the other side of this, I've marked uh, the tyre and then the rim. This is actually the, the, the rim tape. I've marked the tyre and I've marked the rim, so as when I take it all back off again, I know exactly which way to put it. So what I'm going to do now is take the tyre off, take this off, and then I'm going to stick these on the inner... I don't even know what you call it, you know, the valley sort of thing in the middle, just over the spokes. So I'm going to stick those over there, so as they're not going to interfere with anything that was it and then I'm going to put rim tape all around it and then I'm going to put this stuff over it and then everything's going to be fantastic I've got to show you this because it's just pure break porn Oh, <laughs> these are the brakes that I've always wanted. These are the brakes that I should have fitted on version 2. These are the brakes that are just going to throw me over the bars no matter what the pressure I pull. It's uh, Hope V4, I think it's a V4 floating vented front disc or rotor. And also a Hope. Pro 4, whatever, blah blah blah, V4 uh, caliper. Now, if you want to buy the, the, the rotor or the disc, uh, yeah, they're expensive. Um, apparently, they're worth every single penny. But what you've got to bear in mind is a standard uh, caliper doesn't fit. So you have to buy the, the, the Hope a caliper to go with it, which has got a wider body on it. Oh, porn. This is my headlight. There. Now, I bought the headlight. It cost me, I think it was 65 quid. It's probably the most expensive thing I've bought for God knows how long. But it didn't come with a surround. Now, there's a story behind this. I bought the headlight. It's fantastic, actually. I wanted it for the weekend because I wanted to fit it, but the seller, when he listed it, he listed it as UPS next day delivery, and when I got the dispatch notice, it said second class. So it took five days to arrive, and in the meantime, I raised a, a, a sort of a dispute. I, I didn't. I emailed the bloke, and I said, you, you said UPS next day delivery, and he said, sorry, that was it. No, that was just an apology, nothing else. So it turned up five days later. When it arrived, I noticed that there wasn't a surround for it. 
So I emailed the bloke and I said, do you sell the surrounds? And he sent me a link to the surround. And the surround was 70 quid. So I thought I'd save a bit of money and I'd buy a cheap ass, bloody eight, I think I paid eight quid. Eight quid for a crappy piece of headlight and it don't fit, it's not quite big enough. So I've had to cut it out and try it and it, it fits, but that's it. It's all together with tape. I went back to his store and I thought oh, I'm going to have to buy it off him because they're 75 or 72, 75 quid, I can't remember. And he's banned me from buying it so I couldn't buy it. So I was searching for an alternative, 54 quid in China, or I found one on eBay for 20 quid. It's identical. So this is my headlight and there's the backing piece that I made. So what I'm going to do is take all this tape off, if I can figure out where the hell the end of it is. So you can see how I bodged this. It's not a bad fit. Uh, it's bodged, but it's not a bad fit, and it would have been held together with tape. So this is the headlight, like that. There is no, there's no support, there's no mounting, there's absolutely nothing for it. The front piece don't fit. It's not quite big enough. It's a seven inch surround and I've even cut this bit off here, which is bloody razor sharp now. I've even cut this bit off here with a Dremel to see if I could get it over there and it just, it won't, no, it won't fit. So, I've got this. This is a box and in the box is my surround for my headlight, not your headlight, my headlight. This is the first time, I've taken it out before, but this is the first time I've actually taken it out to test it, to fit it. And if it don't fit, you're going to see it on camera and see my natural response. Which isn't going to be a very good one, believe me, if it doesn't fit. You are taking the piss. This thing here is made of metal. It ain't plastic, it's bloody metal. That, Jesus, bloody hell, that's massive. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. There is no instructions. There's no instructions whatsoever. Get rid of that. Oh, hang on. What's that? 3M tape. 3M tape, 3M tape, oh great, what a f ball ache that was, which fitted, but it ain't waterproof, it's definitely not waterproof, and it's massive, in comparison to that, it don't, it's just humongous and I can't now, I can't use these for mounting brackets, so I'm stuck. I think I'm going to have to go back to my original idea of taping it on. <sighs> Things are progressing quickly actually. Uh, this is the headlight there and this stuff around here is self amalgamating tape which I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a minute. I've used part of the surround off that 20 quid bloody thing that I bought and then sealed it and because it doesn't, it's secured, it ain't, it ain't coming off, that's absolutely rock solid now. So that's that, the wires have been braided, um, those have been braided as well. I can't do one loom, it's going to have to be multiple looms, which I'll explain at a later date, I can't be asked at the minute. <laughs> With the brakes, I did loads and loads of research. Um, 
there's two different types you've got normally open and normally closed now the normally closed ones when you pull that it opens a switch and normally open when you pull that it closes the switch so I want it normally open so when you do that it closes the switch they've sent me the wrong ones and that's after I've routed all the wires it all goes through the loom and everything so I'm going to have to do my Arduino bit and reverse it, it doesn't matter it's not a problem um, it's just something to be aware of if you actually buy these Magura MT5E blah 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 but whatever they are so we've got the main power wires here these are white cable ties and I'll say it again I've said it before in the last video anything with white cable ties is temporary it's only because I've got a load of them and I'm just rerouting all the wires stop asking the f question and telling me to get black cable ties I've already got them so shut the f oh dear I shouldn't say that so these two wires here One's for the bright light and one's for the indicators. Uh, obviously I've still got to shield these. These are the phase wires which is still got to be done. I've still got to route it around. Here's the final uh, the final design of the torque arm cover and protector and everything. Works fantastically. Well it will do when it's working. And also for anybody who's wondering I've had a load of questions of people saying you need a chain guard and everything else. No, I don't. Because when I go for the test, the chain isn't going to be fitted. I'm not going to have pedals. It's just going to be pegs. I've got an idea of um, if I was to get some cranks and then chop it off there and then lift it up, have them both facing the same way and have them both lifted to about there and then I'll have, oh, then I'll have foot pegs here. That's the idea anyway. This piece here is a bit too far back for me, so they've got to be raised and put forwards. So the clearance here that I've got is only for me when I'm testing, or if I ever need to put pedals back on it. Otherwise, they're not going to be needed. Now the saddle isn't on there for a reason. Um, I've been thinking about ways of mounting the rear light and, and where the hell I'm supposed to put it and also the number plate or the mounting for the number plate I can't put it on the back of the saddle that was on there because there's just not enough room because the suspension will hit the bloody thing I can't put it here because I'd need some form of a rack or something like that so what I've decided is this this is my original saddle which was on the bike obviously Oh, it was perfect, but now it isn't, because I need somewhere to mount the number plate, the tail light, indicators and everything else. So what I've got is this. This is off a, I think it's a CR2, a CR50, it's a kid's moped. Now it's very badly made actually, <laughs> it's terrible look at that it's so bad I've got to take the the covering off because I've got to reupholster it I haven't got to reupholster it I've got to redo it because I've got to put I'm taking the subframe off this and I'm going to fit it on here now I've t tested this on the bike it's f it's fantastic actually it works perfectly uh, the only thing I've got to do is straighten it all out and, and you know so I'm going to take the staples out and the idea of it is this is the front piece, there's the back piece because that's the back, that's the front. So I'm going to take the subframe off this and I'm going to put it on there something like that in theory anyway I mean that's the idea whether it will work or not I don't know Now it might look weird at the minute but this is going to be chopped round about there because that's the maximum height that I need and I'm going to be making a, a frame of some kind just to support it this is actually it's solid it's absolutely solid it's off a CR50 um, yeah it does look a bit weird actually I can't lower it anymore all I've done is I've put the suspension the subframe and everything from uh, the battery that I had 
the battery. From the saddle that I had, I had a spare one, so I took the subframe off. It's fine, it works perfectly. And believe it or not, actually thinking about it, this stuff is exactly the same thickness as the, the saddle that I took off. There's no there's no difference. If you want to see how I did it. It's a bit crude. I've still got to tidy it all up, but that's how that front piece goes in. And then the back piece is just bolted through. So that's going to go on there. And then I've got to chop it off there because the light is going to sit about there. Like that. Now obviously with the mud guard there, I'm going to have to chop some of it off, I think. It's going to have to be... I'll either have to lower it down like that, somehow. So that can fit on there. The only trouble is, I, I think... Well, Now the legality with, with number plates is, there is no minimum or maximum size of a number plate. The only thing that matters is the spacing of the letters. So you have to have a certain amount of space around each letter and you know, so you, you can actually cut the number plate down to its bare minimum, whatever. If you get a number of A1, you can have a number plate that big and that I. That's what I want. A1 or OBO110X. Obviously I've got to be mindful of the clearance on here because the number plate I'm going to have to make allowances for an 8 inch number plate I'm also going to have to make allowances for, for deflection off the suspension obviously it can't touch it so I've got loads of considerations to make at the minute um, I can't have the number plate up here because this Unless I can strengthen it even more, it's not very. I mean, it's... it doesn't bend too much, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Trust me. Trust me, he says. <laughs> <laughs>